Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Been meaning to do this video for ages, guys. Over the last three years, I've accumulated an absolute pile, like Smog the Dragon in The Hobbit, hoarding all his gold. I've got this big kind of stockpile of detailing products that I'm never gonna be able to use. And if they sit there for years and years, they're just gonna expire and they're gonna be no good to anyone. So in this video, I wanna go through all those products and pick all the essential detailing products that I wanna keep that I'll probably look to buy going forwards. It's all this kind of stuff that I've recommended and rated on the channel. So if you're kind of deciding or looking for some recommendations on what products you could kind of stock in your garage, this will be a really good video, hopefully to, to try and watch. So the next thing is, is to start going through all of this stuff and decide what I'm gonna keep. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've cleared off all my shelves, gone through all the products, and this is really what I've got left. All the stuff that I essentially need. So I'm gonna go through those wash, decon, abrasive, protection products, and accessories, if you like. These are all kind of the staples here that I need. First up, an automotive shampoo. So if you watch the best of car shampoo video, Car Chem 1900 to one was the winner of that test, and it's the one, this bottle will last me for ages. I have kept also a bottle of Meguiar's Wash Plus, the abrasive shampoo, because that just gives me some extra kind of capabilities with the abrasives in there to kind of strip product and kind of deep clean. It's great on glass as well. So that, that product comes in useful, so I've kept that. I've also just kept a uh, ceramic shampoo as well that I'm going to be using when I've got the ceramic coating. I don't really need to. The Karkin one's perfectly fine on ceramic coatings. But I just figured I'm gonna go through that eventually, so that will keep me going for a little bit longer. I also have kept my bottle of Optimum No Rinse, which you know you can use as an alternative wash method. I don't typically use it, but in the summer, I find it a very quick way of just wiping the dust off the panels. Um, you know, I've talked about it before on the channel. It's also got a lot of other functions, and I'll use it as a clay lube going forward, because it's very economical. You know, and a litre bottle of it will serve you well and last you a long time. So it's a product I want to keep. My main APC here is Koch Chemi Green Star that I've talked about many times. I want an APC to be concentrated. I want it for a variety of different jobs. I want it to be safe on interiors. I don't want it to contain certain chemicals that are caustic for exteriors so I can use it. I can throw it around in wheel arches, clean anything with it basically, degrease engine bays with it, clean tires and alloy wheels with it. But most importantly guys is the price and Koch Chemi Green Star for a 10 to one concentrate or even higher concentration if you're doing interiors at five pound a litre just sets, sets a benchmark that no, nothing else has been able to break really. So for me to replace this with something else, the APC has got to be really good quality, but um, less than five pounds a litre. No, there's not going to be many, not going to be many products on the market that are going to be able to do that. So that's a fantastic APC. It's powerful as well, guys. Um, I'm also, it's important probably to ha also have a citrus pre-wash in there, something, you know, a lot of the citrus um, pre-washes or citrus cleaners will contain something called D-limonene, a solvent that's made from, um, a solvent that's made from orange peel, like a, an oil from the orange peel, a solvent essentially. I'm not sure if that has it in there, I'm, most of them do, I haven't checked the SDS. But it gives you a little bit more poke, it's got, the, the limonene itself has got a good degreasing quality, it's good on kind of mould and all that sort of stuff you know, and grime, uh, and it might be something you could step up to from a, from a normal APC. So you probably want to consider having a citrus pre-wash in there. So that is the also Auto Gland Spritzer, highly concentrated. Then we go on to two chemicals here that I am essentially using for wheel cleaning. Now with wheel cleaning, you've got acidic wheel cleaners, alkaline wheel cleaners, and bleeding fallout removers. And I'll do a, di a video at some point on the difference between both all of them. Generally at home, 
If you're maintaining your wheels well and you've got protection on your alloy wheels, you know, it might be ceramic coated, you don't need to use strong chemicals. You could do it with an APC or a shampoo. You know, your contact and your scrubbing is going to be the important bit. Those, these other chemicals typically come in useful when you've got kind of very dirty alloys where the brake dust has kind of dried on over a long period of time. The worst case scenario, a filthy alloy wheel that's not been cleaned for years and the, the brake dust layers have embedded in, you know, layers of it and it's gone all brown from where it's rusted. Typically you're going with an acid cleaner. That is, acids are corrosive and they shrink solid particles and that's why they're very effective. But they can also damage kind of clear coat and you shouldn't use them regularly so if you're in the trade you're going to want an acid cleaner access to an acid cleaner but for a guy at home I've just got a little little uh, bottle of wonder wheels there which is a strong acidic cleaner that, like I say you wouldn't want to use week in week out in my opinion but it's good to have there still um, and I've got a bleeding fallout remover a Corisol I, I find that if I even a very heavy alloy wheel, dirty alloy wheel, if I go and pre-wash it first and then scrub it with you know an APC or something like that, or even an alkaline wheel cleaner, whatever's left, the fallout that's left, most times a good fallout remover will break that down and dislodge it as well by by like I've said before, by dissolving the rust layer from the embedded fallout, which which sort of frees it up out of the paintwork, dislodges it. So a lot of times these um, bleeding fallout removers will work. I'm picking Corosol, which is their their dedicated fallout remover as opposed to built hamber auto wheels which is their wheel cleaner slash fallout remover because i want one that i can use for paintwork as well but i can still use that after i've cleaned alloy wheels um, to remove it so that will do me there is one other one that i will grab two seconds where is it now? So this is Valley Pro um, Bilberry Wheel Cleaner. It's a concentrated alkaline cleaner that you can bulk down. Um, this is just what's left of the bottle. This will make up one more pump sprayer full for me, which will last me for ages. It's it's contains some stronger alkalines that are slightly more caustic than what you'll find in the, the Green Star APC. So it's something that you wouldn't perhaps use unless you need to, but it's not nowhere near as aggressive as alloys. It's just a step up for me. So. That's pretty much it really with um, wheel cleaning and my fallout remover decontamination. After that, um, I've got my glass cleaner there, Angel Wax Vision that I've talked about. This stuff does me, I th believe it's ammonia based, very strong. If I look at the label there, it says do not inhale. It stinks, um, but it's it's really good at cutting through that layer of grease on, on that you get on the glass. You spray it on there, work it into the grease and then try and buff it on the turn before it vaporizes. Once it vaporizes away, any glass cleaner, then you're gonna be left just with that grease. You know, what you want to do is the product to dissolve that grease and then you buff it when the product's sort of mixed in with it. <coughs> so, Angel Wax Vision is one that I like. It's also pretty cost effective and you can buy five liters of it if you want. Now, in, in addition to fallout remover contamination, obviously, um, a mineral spirit based product that you can use to remove tar and glues. Now I've got my TARDIS down at the bottom shelf as well tucked away because I've got five litres of that, very potent um, tar and glue remover. But I'll typically just use the um, Tetrasil panel wipe degreaser because it works, it break, it's mineral spirit based, it breaks down tar that's on paintwork um, and it's very cost effective and it, and it delivers for me. Um, 11 pounds or 12 pounds for five liters i think you can pick it up so you know i'm just of the mindset that i'd rather have five liters of it than a little bottle um that costs virtually the same amount so it's like 10 times cheaper than getting a you know just one bottle of product so that's the sort of things i consider but these are bulk standard chemicals that i can use um you know that give me various sorts of functionality to keep my car clean um you know, do you have to use these ones? Of course you don't. These are just the ones that I've picked for various reasons, and I always go into the detail on the channel. So that's all the bulk standard stuff there, guys. Okay, guys, so panning the camera down over to here as well. You can see some other products that, just see, these are some oddball ones. Here's all my clays, guys, and I've got loads of different clays from, from a few different brands. The built handle one is the one that I tend to talk about a lot because it sets a price benchmark you know, it's a quality clay made by Bill Hamber in the UK, but the thing about it is it's 10 or 11 pounds for 200 grams. You know, and that sets a benchmark for price where you've got to start asking yourself, is the clay you're using more expensive and is it giving you anything 
but these ones aren't. You've got a range of different clays through to soft, medium and aggressive with them. Um, so yeah, if I was to change clays, it's got to kind of, it's got to perform, but it's got to also give me more value for money. And there are some, there are actually some options now, which I'll probably talk about later on on the channel. I also really like these clay cloths, guys. If you're faced with the challenge of having to do a full detail on the car in one day, then this can save you a lot of time. There is a trade-off, and I'll do a full video on the differences between clay cloths and clay bars, in my opinion, but you can get round a car very quickly with a clay cloth. Um, this Turtle Wax interior cleaner, I like it. I'm gonna keep some of that as well. I also have a dedicated water spot remover there from Gion. Um, that I can use while I'm prepping the car. So it's just a dedicated product. There's nothing else in there. It's not like a detail spray like the Koch one. So if I, before, um, you know, polishing a car and all that, if there's a water spot issue, I could use that. There's very few of these on the market actually. And the Built Hamber Atom Mac, which I talked about, something you can just sort of spray on after washing the car. A lot of people are saying they do it every single time after they detail their car they use this to stop the rust. I don't, I do it every couple of months or whenever I can remember and it seems to seems to have a good effect but you can use it every wash if you like and I think lots of people are. If I pan the camera down here guys, um, my pre-wash snow foam, Built Hamber Auto Foam does it for me. We're gonna be doing a best of snow foam video very soon to compare some other ones. There are some reasons why you might not like Built Hamber Auto Foam, but it works for me, what I want it to do. Um, so there's my pre-washing. Down here I just have some bulk chems. You can just see out of the edge of the frame of the picture shot that are used. So I've got some deionized water, some isopropanol, some uh, SLS and some other bits and pieces behind there that, that you know, will, will come in handy. Next thing is automotive leather, guys. You know how I roll on the channel. I typically, you just really, or I'm, the thing I'm looking for is a leather cleaner and then a leather protector, that is it. And, and a leather protector in the sense of an anti-friction product, not a feed, although we'll talk about this in a second. There's two, and let me uh, point that, or do it this way so I'm not giving you the bird. There's two dramas with leather. One is should you use APCs to clean it, and two, should you use protect sort of feeds, conditioners, oils on leather. Let's just cover the APC drama first. I think I've done talked about this first on the channel. I asked Ram from Colorlock what his view on um, all this sort of stuff was using APCs, and he said to me, if the company formulate this APC and it's formulated for use on leather, it's been tested for use on leather, they give you a concentration that's suitable to clean leather with it, you've used it, you've got a good experience with it, it works for you, great. Um, however, not all APCs are formulated for cleaning leather. Some of them do contain harsh components, you know, slightly caustic things. Um, and you are really primarily trying to maintain with new leather the top coat, the thin flexible top coat that's put on the painted layer. Um, so you probably want to use something that's suitable is, is the bottom line with that and that's why I'm using the mild leather cleaner from Colorlock and I've seen how good that is sort of you know compared to all of the rest of the cleaning products on the market and it did really well on a variety of stains uh, and sort of contamination on leather it's a, it's a good cleaner guys basically um, now the second debate is whether you should be using an oil or a feed or a conditioner or something like that. On new leather where the top coat's intact all over that kind of driver's seat scenario, then your conditioner isn't gonna penetrate at that stage and it's not gonna feed the leather. Um, also a lot of automotive leathers nowadays or for a long time aren't leather, they're vinyl, completely synthetic, or they're a PU kind of leather. So they, they use the lower grain, cheaper cut of leather and they, put a layer of plastic over the top of that and emboss it and make it look like leather. And because the backing of it is the cheaper lower cut of the leather, they can say it's 90% real leather and give it a trademark name, um, which is something that goes on. That layer of plastic is not gonna allow the conditioners through a lot of times. So really, if you are gonna use a conditioner type product, which is there to feed the leather and soften it, really should be using it on genuine top grain leather which isn't in all cars and if it is used it's also not used in every single particular section of the driver's seat for example it may only be in the contact areas and the sides might be vinyl so it makes it all very confusing um, but the bottom line is if you do have genuine top grain leather 
after I think Ram said something like 25,000 miles or a couple of years, the top coat generally is, is kind of eroded away in places and the conditioner can get through its porous. You can test it by putting water on it and seeing it absorb into the kind of leather. So the conditioners can get in and they can do whatever they do on leather. They can contain antioxidants, more UV protection, um, oils which are kind of there to soften the leather and all that sort of stuff. So ultimately guys, I hope that's a bit of good consumer advice. Um, you don't always need to be using these oil type of feed, moisturizer products and stuff like that. But on battered old genuine leather, they can turn brittle leather into a slightly more soft kind of supple leather and provide some sorts of protections that like I've just talked about. So really down to you. They can also make the old battered leather look nice for sure. They can definitely do that. So hopefully that's some good advice. Let's get back on track with where I am. So I'm essentially using the, the Color Lock Mild Leather Cleaner and the Color Lock Anti-Friction Coating just to reduce friction wear, which is the main enemy of your leather seat. And have a look at some of the leather videos we've done on this channel to see all that information. Back to the core kind of detailing products, guys. The dressing that I'm picking is Car Pro Pearl. Big fan of this stuff. Concentrated and bulk it down three to one for general kind of dressing of plastics and stuff like that. And trim one to one with water for tyres, which I think it looks good on tyres. I've got some there at three to one. And it has a good restor restorative effect on faded plastic as well, which is a little bonus. And it's quite a durable um, dressing, I find. <coughs> People do say there's a water spotting issue with it. If you put too much on or over concentrate it or don't prepare the surface first, it can struggle to bond and you can get like an over concentration of little white dots that appear. I have seen that. If it happens, just go back over it with water or a lower concentration of the product and typically it, it shouldn't happen. So. If it was a problem, I wouldn't be using it, guys. It's one of my favorite all-round dressings. I'll also always keep a bottle of a restorer that's handy for really battered, um, you know, plastic, essentially, that's gone whiter or gray. And you can clean it down with, and then, you know, treat it with solution finish, which I think is a good product. Um, so, it's, you know, that's a product that I'll always have some kicking around. I'm gonna test whether you can put ceramic coatings on top, because a few, few people have suggested that works really well. I've got the Valet Pro Enzyme Odor Eater here, guys, just to treat any kind of bacterial bacterial uh, infestations in the car, um, which does happen now and then, so you need an odor eliminator. I've got the Koch Chemi FSE, which is a descaler water spot remover and detail spray in one, which I've talked about a lot on the channel. See some of the videos, the best detail spray mega test, I think, and, and I've done a dedicated video on this as well. It's cheap. And it's just a really good product. Um, and just the detail spray. So I've got the FK425 there, guys. Um, when I shot the best detailing video, the best detail spray video many years ago, I compared just the little bottle prices of them. Nowadays, I look for the bulk price. Um, so Dun & Dusted was my favorite one. I was gonna just buy myself five liters of Dun & Dusted, but it's 80 quid. Um, for five liters and I, I can't afford that so I was looking for something that I can get for around about 20 to 25 liters a gallon that's that ticks that box although <sighs> detail sprays are detail sprays I I don't want them to add like protection nowadays or anything like that I want to use them when I'm drying my car um, to help with perhaps with the drying process or, or when I finish washing and drying my car just to give them a quick spray over and gentle buff and bring up some gloss, that sort of stuff. I want them to be used on all sorts of surfaces, but I want them cheap. I'll get my way through that and I'll try some other others on the channel because that's the name of the game, always trying kind of new stuff. So there's just some other stable products that are very, very important. And if I finally pan the camera around over to here to protection products, I've got my Moonlight and Wet Coat combo that I've done a dedicated video. I'm just really impressed with that. I've got some Adams H2O Gloss and Guard, which I've done a review on, which is another quick type of protection product that you could use every couple of months. A bit like Wet Coat, but it's different. It's got resins in it as well as xylazanes, and it, you spread it out over the panel when it's a little bit wet, and it will leave a murky layer that's very light, and you just buff. And I think it's a good product. I think it makes the car look good. I think it makes, you know, you can see the water sheeting, and it's quite quick to apply. So I like this stuff. 
Um, I have double speed wax there because it's a, it's a good wax for $14.99 that lasts about three or four months. Nice and repellent. It can be a little bit sticky. Don't put too, too much of it on. Let it completely cure and it will buff off no problems. But it, it does have a slight stickiness to it. Um, although it's probably not the right word. Grabbiness, perhaps, if you over apply it. But not a problem for me. And going forward, when I want more of it, it cost me $14.99. There's lots of good waxes over there, but this will last me years on its own. Like I say, if I keep five waxes sitting around, they're all just gonna go off. Uh, I'll always, always have some uh, high temperature paste wax, FK1000P, because you can seal anything with it, exhausts and anything that's gonna get hot that when other waxes would melt. This synthetic type wax, if you like, can handle heat. It doesn't make the car look amazing, but you can use it as a paintwork sealant as well. And I've got some ceramic coatings there that I'm gonna get this synchro kit onto my car, um, quick sharpish and uh, I'll end up using all of that. So we talked about the Synchro kit loads on the channel. It's a really good coating package for me. Okay guys, now I'm going on to abrasives. You know, I'm keeping quite a few of these because they're expensive abrasives and you do get through them, but there's enough abrasives here to keep me going for a fair while. I've got the Koch line here, yeah, HA, F5 and M201. So heavy cut, medium cut, finishing polish. H8 is the one that gives, I think has quite a lot of cut, that, you know, Typically all you need. Um, the Shoal line, the Shoal Concepts line of abrasive, S S3, S20 and S40. More oily abrasives that you can work longer. Perhaps the lowest dusting formulation on the market. Um, <coughs> very nice to use these are. S40 is a little bit on the oily side for me, but I'm splitting. It doesn't matter, it still, still delivers me results. It's good stuff. The Ferrecla line of abrasives, the uh, G360, super fast for a really, you know, the cut, I've talked about this a few times in a few videos, it's a very aggressive compound that you need to be careful of, but it can deliver you results very quickly. And it's too good to have, to not to have. It's giving me something the other ones don't have, but it's a, it's a, it's a system on steroids, but it's really nice. Two finishing polishes that, these are the ones that I actually want to keep and use 99% of the time. So I'll probably, you know, once I've got through these, these are the two that I would actually look to buy. Um, SF3500, it used to be called 4000. 3500, which is a finishing polish with just a little bit more cut than this. So this is SF3800, or used to be called 4500. Virtually no cut on this. It's an out and out glossing agent. You could go time and time again just to bring up gloss. It's just a lovely glossing finishing polish, this. This one though you would use after you've done compounding if there were just some very light swirls or some compound marring and you wanted that little bit of extra cut. These would be pretty much all I would need and I, there's not much I don't like about them. Um, so they're really good, two, two really good finishing polishes. So you know if I wanted to minimise it even more I would probably have H8 and S3 and then these two and then some mid-range products. I've also kept the Detailing Kingdom 1.1 because I like that. It's very similar to S3 Gold, nice and oily, easy to use. I'm going to be using these Geon sample bottles here that they sent me for the brand review when I do the Synchro kit on my car. So I'm going to use the whole Geon system. And I've got some hand polishes here, the Adams Revive hand polish. I could just buff over the headlights with that or any sort of bits of plastic in the car or whatever that you want to just shine up by hand. Just like that product. And that poor boy's black hole glaze, which I think is a good glaze. I would have probably kept the super resin polish, but the bottle I've had of that is very old, years and years and years old. Whereas this one's, you know, a lot newer. So I've, I've kept that one. I like this product as well. Um, and then Adam's lighter glaze, which is less resinous. Not as good as a filler glaze as Paul Boys, but very quick to use and makes the car look good and does do a little bit of filling as well. So it's a, a light glaze, that one. Um, and I'm just keeping a, a metal polish, just one. I'm gonna be getting a new me metal polish soon because of the results of the latest testing we did for metal polishes. There was, I don't actually know the final full results yet, but when I was down there for the day, I saw one polish that caught my eye I thought, well, I'm getting that. And I saw how this stuff performs against it. And uh, there was a really, really strong product in that test that I'll talk about later on. Okay, guys, so that, come on, focus properly, is now how my, my shelves look. It's so much better. I can reach everything. And it's just 
so much more manageable. Um, okay, guys, so if I bring the camera in here, there's just a lot of stuff here that these got a couple of flex t shirts here that don't fit me, ton of air fresheners, some leather products there that are just gonna not get used. It's various detergents. I don't use the ONR wash and wax as much, I just prefer the normal ONR for me. Um, a whole ton of stuff here that if I just pan across that. Like I say, oh, a cup of coffee there as well. That'll come in handy. Oh, a stone bastard cold. Um, some waxes, the oily waxes that you can, can't really see down here. The Pete's 53 and stuff that just never going to get used. Loads of microfiber kind of samples and things that are just taking up all of the space in the garage that I'd rather give to my patrons and maybe they could have a look and tell me what they think of them, you know, on the channel and whether they've, from trying them, whether it makes them want to go and buy more, um, you know, so there's all that sort of side to it. Um, over here are some products that I think, oh, let me just set the camera down, <coughs> that I think, <coughs> excuse me, I don't want to throw away. I don't want to throw away Fuso or the Kiwami. I don't want to give that away either. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. I've got to have a think about some of this stuff because they're products that I kind of like. The Gion Can Coat as well, like the Moonlight. I really like this stuff and I can use it. But if I put it all back on the shelves, I'm, I'm not making any progress. So there's some, a load of really good products here that, that I'm struggling to want to want to give away because I know I'm going to kind of half use them so I've still got a little bit of thinking to do there is over here as well guys over here I have um, a lot of products that are probably out of focus there we go we are gearing up to do a best sealant video so I'm I've got some sealants down there that are going to be in that test also a best like wheel dressing kind of test and oh, the best snow foams as well. So I've put those in the trolley, and as and when I do those videos, I'll have loads more products as well that, that I that I can't keep, and I'll end up um, giving away to the patrons. So that is it, guys. I'm just going to go ahead now and kind of um, box up some of these products to send off to the patrons, and I will swip around. I'll put some. I won't just put like detergents in one box and send it out. I'll try and put some microfiber, some waxes, you know, some cleaning products and all that sort of stuff so you've got a nice little sample of everything from the um from everything we've looked at and obviously as i'm shooting this video it'll take a couple of weeks and i'll announce on the patreon page when i as and when i do the giveaways and i'll do it by the random number um as always so thank you very much to everyone that's watched this video thank you very much to the guys that um support the channel through patreon that allows me to keep doing what i'm doing which is Great fun, and I, this video has been long overdue, guys. Like I say, it was a tipping point, and now everything feels better. I feel like the garage is kind of functional again. So, just got to clear down the rest of the horizons, get these, get this thing over here clear again, and um, then the garage is back to kind of ship shape again, which it hasn't been for years. So, woohoo! Okay, guys, that's it for this one. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Where was I when you